Good morning everyone, we are in a new topic today as you can see, but it is new with an asterisk because graphing is something we've been doing for years and years and years. Um, but what we've done is we've sort of amassed all of this knowledge um, kind of in bits and pieces. And so what we wanna do over the next uh, week and a half is to really collect that into one place. Now, one of the reasons why it's worth doing this now is that I just wanna sort of take you on a very, very short stroll over the last couple of weeks of content, right? Now, I literally just scrolled back up through the notes that I've been doing as I've been teaching you guys. And um, this is just all sprinkled throughout my notes. And I hope they were sprinkled throughout your notes as well. When you're working out areas uh, and integrating, clearly your diagram uh, is decisive in how you often work out uh, you know, what, what's the area? Where's the region? What are my boundaries going to be? Um, all these kinds of pieces of information. Uh, in theory, you can work them out algebraically if you have like a really deep and intimate knowledge of exactly what these functions should look like. Um, but even for seasoned mathematicians like Mrs. Lees and I, you know, the picture is enormously instructive for us and there are always things which you kind of think, oh, I wouldn't have necessarily expected that. Um, you know, one of my favorite examples over here on the top right hand corner, some of you saw this, but a lot of you didn't because you didn't look at that um, other video we provided. This is an area between uh, two trigonometric functions. And when you get handed the question in algebra, you're like, oh, it's an area between two curves. It'll probably start somewhere, end somewhere, and there will be some number of regions defined by the points of intersection. But it's not immediately apparent until you actually draw the thing that what you've got here, and you can see I've got two regions shaded in pink and a region shaded in yellow. It's not immediately apparent until you draw that these two pink areas are exactly equal to the yellow area when, when you combine them. Now that's something which is uh, which I go into detail in that video, so you should go and have a look at it if this is all sounding new to you. Um, but in this topic, graphing techniques, we're gonna be going through all the different kinds of functions with the exception of trigonometric ones because we're actually gonna spend more time on that um, separately. However, all this knowledge and all these different other kinds of functions which come up all the time, we're really gonna drill down into graphing them. So today, and I'm just pausing because I can hear like a clicky thing. Is that me or you, Mrs. Lees? Oh, probably me. <laughs> okay, thumbs up. I will proceed. This morning, where we're going to begin is with that family of functions that is most familiar to you, and that's the polynomials. We're also going to throw in absolute value functions um, just because we can, I think. Now, for each of these, polynomials and absolute value, and then for the other families of functions in the coming days, um, we're just going to look at the basics first, and then what we're going to focus on is when you take those basic functions, um, and you can see some of them here, we're about to draw them, so you might as well get some uh, coordinate axes ready to sketch on. What we want to focus, is, uh, focus on is two different ways to transform these graphs to sort of take the basic version and then say, well, what about if we modify it in this way or that way? There's two particular transformations we're gonna look at. Um, one starts with T and one starts with D. We'll get to them shortly. So for starters, let's just get our brain back in the mode of graphing. And I'm just gonna point out now, in integral calculus, uh, we've been saying, oh, you know, the question is find an area, evaluate a definite integral, all these kinds of things. The graph was not the point. What we're looking at now is the graph, that is the point. So whereas in the past, and I've said it many times, I would say, ah, oh, this is just a quick and dirty sketch. We don't need heaps of detail. We just need to see enough to help us. In this case, we're gonna have a much more um, detailed look and we're gonna be more stringent. We're gonna be expecting the shape to be more accurate. We're gonna expect you to put on all of the features and not miss any of them out because when the graph is the question, then um, that is the focus. So it's not just an additional tool on the side, okay? Right, so we'll begin with some nice and easy ones. Um, we're looking at polynomials here, and I know we don't think of y equals x as a polynomial, but it is x raised to an in, a positive integer power, so it's, um, it's a, a power of one. So let's go ahead and just for the sake of it, graph it. What are we getting here? We're having a straight line passes through the origin, and of course it has a gradient of one. Now, if I go ahead and label that as y equals x, that's nice, and I can even put in that zero there to indicate the intercepts. Um, but it is worth pointing out that 
on appearance, this graph could actually not just be y equals x, it could be y equals 2x, 3x, 4x, depending on what the scale looks like, right? So if you've never been introduced to this idea before, it is really important that somewhere on this graph, if I cannot otherwise tell, there has to be a point, a set of coordinates that gives me a sense of the scale of this graph. Like, is it very steep? Is it very shallow? Without any numbers on the graph, particularly in the axes, I can't tell, right? So you just need to point, pick a point that's convenient to you. As an example, I know that 1 comma 1 is going to sit on this line. And now that I've put this um, point for scale onto the graph, I know this can't be y equals 2x because it doesn't pass through that point. Can't be y equals 3x because it doesn't pass through that point. You get the idea. Um, I call this a point for scale. I'm going to label it as such. Uh, you might hear other people um, call this a locking point because it's sort of locks in where the graph goes, but I like to call it a point for scale because it's a point that tells you what the scale of the graph is. So there's our y equals x. Right, for the next one, y equals x squared. Again, I'm going to speed through this even though I could wait for some more interaction because I think you're fairly comfortable with this. This, of course, quadratic equation is going to give us a parabola, right? Now, I'm going to start from the origin here and I'm going to draw my uh, right-hand branch. Actually, I can do better than that. Let's try again. That's more like it, okay? There's my right-hand part in the first quadrant, and then what I want is a reflection over there on the left-hand side. It's not perfect, but it is actually good enough for me to put all the information that I need, namely uh, our intercept, which in this case is also the vertex. And also, like before, I need a point for scale. Um, conveniently, I could put the same one. One, one is a point that y equals x squared passes through, but I could put anything else as well. I could put, say, for example, two, comma, four. And now that I've popped that in, um, this can't be any other parabola. This has to be y equals x squared. And I should label it as such. Okay, last basic one we're going to have a look at, and we could, we could keep on doing this for a while, but this will be enough for us to start understanding what those transformations are. y equals x cubed. So uh, you're going to look very much like y equals x squared in the first quadrant, right? Except steeper. So you're going to get a similar kind of shape like this, right? But because x cubed is, um, you know, when you, when you cube a negative number, you get a negative number back. Unlike in x squared, we're going to go down here into the negatives like so. So this is our familiar y equals x cubed point. Um, again, passing through the origin. And let's put one more point on here uh, just for the sake of it. Let's call it 2 comma 8. That'll do. Um, and if you're wondering where am I getting these coordinates from, I'm picking an x value, any x value you like really, and then I'm substituting it into my function. So you can see over here, when I put in 2, when I put in x equals 2, I'm getting y equals 2 cubed, which of course gives me my value of 8 that you can see up there in the top right hand corner. So that's y equals x cubed. Now we started off here with some very, very simple graphs because what we're going to do is transform these graphs and make them uh, more complicated, see how they result in changes visually. Um, but I do want to point out, of course, you will meet polynomials that aren't so simple. Um, you might, for example, meet something like, let me put it in a different color. You might meet something like y equals x squared plus 5x plus 6. And in this case, what we're going to need to do is some factorization that will help us find the intercepts and if necessary, also provide a point for scale. And the same thing over with our cubic over there. Within the advanced course, if you get handed a cubic, it won't be um, a mess. It'll be something that's relatively easy to factorize for you. So as an example, um, you might get given y equals x cubed plus 5x squared plus 6x. Now, if you have a look at this, it's relatively simple to factorize x out. And then you get left with that quadratic that you can see there in the middle of the page. You can factorize one step further. So that will give you all the different factors and you can read off the intercepts from there.